this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an automatic Adobe Photoshop network in Maya. Now, you do have to do some work, but Adobe Photoshop and Maya do most of the hard work for you. To begin with, you want to make sure your object has a unique ID to it and is UV mapped. I mean, unique material to it. Right now, it's assigned with Lambert 1, and we need it to have a unique material, so we're going to go to Rendering and assign it with a Lambert material. Appropriately named Lambert 2. And you want to make sure it has UV maps, so go to Window, UV Texture Editor, and yes, it does have a UV, yes, it has been UV mapped. So now, under Rendering Menu Set, I'm going to go to Render, I mean Texturing, Create PSD Network. Now, Image Name, this is the name of the image file that will be created. size, X and Y are the size of the image that will be created. Now note that it's in powers of 2. This is for memory efficiency and it's generally a good practice. Now just because it has a maximum of 248, I mean 2048, it doesn't actually mean that's the largest texture Maya can handle. If you do it manually, you can put a bigger texture through it. We're going to leave it at 512 right now. And also we want Open Adobe Photoshop checked. That means it will launch your copy of Adobe Photoshop when you click create and keep aspect ratio. That just means when one attribute changes, the other attribute changes to the same value. UV settings. You want to make sure include UV snapshot is checked because without it you won't know where to texture. Position, you can just leave this to top and the UV set, you can just leave it at its default. Unless you have some specialty case where you need to change it. Color value. This is the color of the UV lines or edges that you'll see in the UV, sh I mean the UV map in Adobe Photoshop. Now you want it to be a contrast color like white or bright red. That way it, you can see it against the texture when you texture underneath it. Anti-aliasing. This just means we'll anti-aliasing the UV sh texture snapshot. This has nothing to do with the actual texture that you paint. It's only the UV lines themselves. I normally leave it unchecked because it's normally not necessary. Now, Lambert 2 is the material, and these are the attributes that can be textured using the Adobe Photoshop network. So, we want color, and we'll just be using color right now. But if you wanted more, you would, could just select them and click the arrow to load them across. To remove layers, I mean textures, we would simply use the opposite layer, layer I mean arrow, and click them back. Now that the fields on the right have been loaded, and these fields on the right are the ones that will be sent to Adobe Photoshop, we click Create. Now that we're in Adobe Photoshop, the first thing I need to point out is anything in the group Lambert2.color will be the group that, at, or anything inside that group will be the actual contents of your texture. For example, if I was to paint some green here, that would show up in the texture, but if I was to create a layer outside of this group and paint a color on it, it won't show up. It's Maya won't read that texture because it will only read stuff inside this group. Now this group could have any name, it depends on what material or attribute you're texturing, but everything inside whatever group it is, is what will actually be the texture. Now, to help prevent against mistakes like texturing on your UV snapshot layer, I recommend locking the other layers. This will help prevent an accident later on. Now, when you're done texturing, you want to make sure you save. Maya won't be able to load the file otherwise. Maya can't read Adobe Photoshop's RAM. And another thing I should mention is inside your group, you can create other layers or even other groups. You can put anything inside a group you could put inside anything else in Adobe Photoshop. Now, back to Maya first thing you want to do is select your object, go to texturing, update PSD network. It will load the most current copy of that Adobe Photoshop file into Maya. Now I'm going to go downstream to the texture node and just explain some of its attributes. Now this image name, this is the location and the image name and the file format of your PSD. And this is actually not your normal file node, this is a PSD file texture node. This has this extra attribute down here, linked to layer set, or group actually. Right now it's linked to the Lambert2.color group. 
You could also link it to the composite. That will include everything, including the UV snapshot, which when you render it, you'll be able to see the UV snapshot lines actually on your model. Since this is generally undesirable, you should just leave it to assign to one of the groups. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and in another one I'll show you how to do this all manually without help of Adobe Photoshop or Maya.